In this tutorial I will show you the whole process of creating melodic techno track and style of anima starting from building drums, creating really powerful bass, processing vocals and of course building the strong synth group including the signature anima melodic techno lead. What's going on everybody? This is Van Murten and welcome to Anima Melodic Techno Production Tutorial. Just a quick reminder, you can download the template that I've created in this tutorial on my Patreon page. And now, no more words needed, let's go! Ok guys, as you may see I created the channel with the sidechain trigger. Also I created the free send return channels. The first one with the small verb for the drums, the second one with the long verb for the synths, vocals and other stuff. And the third with the delay. And now we can slowly move to the kick selection. I will create the empty MIDI channel for our future kick. And don't forget that we are creating the track and style of anima and because of it we need to find a really punchy and hard kick. And I have prepared all the samples guys, because I don't want to waste your time. Yeah, this kick is, sounds definitely good and we will place him on the channel. Now we can duplicate the kick in the MIDI clip. Yeah, it sounds good, but I wanted to make it a little bit shorter. I think we need to change the fade out knob. Yep, and now we will trim the kick a little bit shorter. Yeah, perfect, and now kick sounds really good. But it definitely needs some EQ. I will use the stock Ableton EQ. Of course we need to remove the super low frequencies. I think it would be around 40 Hz. Yeah, good, and now I will find the main kick frequency and will reduce a few dB. Yeah, it's around 50 Hz. And our main goal with this EQ for the kick to make him sound more punchy, not heavier. Perfect, and now I think we need to boost a little bit of the high frequencies. I just wanted to add a little bit of the click to the kick. Yep, we finished the whole work with the EQ on the kick and now we can extend him for the whole drop. I think I will remove the one bit of the kick and will duplicate this MIDI clip on four different parts. Ok, now we need to create the group from this main kick because we will add the second layer with the top kick. And before we'll add the top kick, let's check the main one one more time. Ok, everything sounds good and now we can pick our top kick. We will create a new empty MIDI channel for our top kick. And as I said before, I prepared all the samples. For the top kick selection, our main goal is to pick the kick with the really good high end. Ok, now we need to add an EQ on this top kick to remove the low and the mid frequencies. Now we will start to remove these frequencies. Yeah, good, and now we received the really good click sound. And I think I will boost the high frequencies maybe on the 1 dB. Yeah, and let's listen it one more time. Yeah, and now I think we can listen the full group of the kick. We need to make the volume of the top kick a little bit lower than the volume of the main kick. Yep, and now we can duplicate the top kick the same as the main one. Ok, I think we've done all the work with the kick and now we can slowly move to the creating of the bass section. And first of all we will create the really dynamic and the fat bass in style of anima. 
I will create the empty MIDI clip on the preloaded uh, channel with the Serum preset. Yeah, good, and now we can build the notes of the bass. We will produce our track in F minor. In most of the anime tracks, I notice the two patterns of the bass. The first one is the straight bass, and the second one is dynamic of the grid. And I think today we will create the second pattern. Yeah, perfect, I like how it sounds. And now we can loop this bass and extend for the whole drop. Now we will apply the sidechain to this bass and the time has come to the channel that I created in the beginning. On the separate track with the sidechain trigger I have the short kick uh, and I made it for the better sidechain control. Now I will play with the ratio of the sidechain. Yeah, I think 185 is good. Yep, all the work with the sidechain here is done and now we will EQ our main bass. First of all, we need to remove the sub frequencies all around the 40 Hz. Let me play with the Q knob. And I think we need to reduce a few dB on the 60 Hz. Yeah, perfect, and now I like how it sounds. And now we will remove the high frequencies from the low bass, because we want to hear the vocals, the synths and other stuff on the high frequencies. And from the bass on the low frequencies, we want to receive the low frequencies. Yep, and now it definitely sounds good, like a low bass. Ok, as you may see now, I am already created the group from our main low bass and I will put the utility on the whole group of the main bass. And I just wanted to put all the frequencies below 80 to mono. Ok, and now I will put one more EQ on the whole group of our main bass uh, with cutting the low frequencies around the 30 Hz. Ok, now let's check our bass one more time. Ok, now we will create the second layer in our main bass group called top bass. I will duplicate the MIDI from our low bass channel to the channel with the preloaded top bass serum preset. And here is the main trick. I will remove the first note here and all other notes I will make them shorter to create a groove. Yep, and now it sounds good. And now let's listen all together. Now I will add the small reverb from the send return channel. And let's process our top bass. I will load the stock Ableton Erosion and will choose the white noise. Now let's play with the frequency with an amount. I just wanted to give a little bit of white noise to our top bass. Ok, now we will put the EQ on our top bass. Here I think we need to remove all the frequencies below the 150.
Now I will try to play with the Q knob. I think I will try another filter to try the more hard cut. Yeah, it's definitely what I'm looking for. Now I will remove a few dB around 200 Hz. I will adjust the Q knob. And I think minus 6 would be good. Now let's boost a bit of the mid-high frequencies. And here's the final step. We will remove the airy high frequencies from the top base. Yep, now I like how it sounds. And now let's listen the kick and the bass together. Ok, I think we've done with the old work with our main bass group and now we will add the new layers of our bass. Here is the preloaded channel with the Diva VST and I wanted to create the really long dark step. We need to choose the notes a little bit lower. Yeah, this is exactly what we need. Yeah, sounds really good and now we will process our step. I will apply the stock Ableton OTT to boost the high frequencies. Yeah, I think around 3 dB is good. And now I will mix the long reverb from the center turn channel. Ok, and now I will apply EQ here and cut off the low frequencies around 250. And I think I will reduce a few dB around 700 Hz. Ok, now let's play all the elements together. Ok, and now we can duplicate this dark step on the four different parts. Ok, and now we will continue to create the new layers of the bass. Uh, and now it would be the step bass uh, with the preloaded serum preset here. We will create the empty MIDI clip and now let's choose the notes for this step bass. Yeah, we definitely need the much lower notes. Yeah, like this, perfect. I wanted to create the 5 repetitive straight shots. Yep, good, and now we will duplicate them. And now let's play them. Yeah, it definitely sounds good, and now let's listen all together. Now I wanted to mix the long reverb from the send return channel. And let's add some delay also through the send return channel. With these 5 step shots we are creating the really good groove here. I wanted to make a small audio processing and I will start from my favorite distortion plugin called Thermal. And I will play with the presets right here. Now it sounds warm and distorted, and now I wanted to apply some EQ. 
And as usual, we will remove the low harsh frequencies. I think we will remove the frequency around 230. Yeah, now it definitely sounds good. And I will remove a few dB around 300 Hz. And I will add a little bit of airy high frequencies. Yep, and now let's listen all together. Yep, good, and now we can duplicate this step base for the whole drop. Cool, and now we will create the last layer in our whole base group. As you can see, I'm already prepared the channel with the wavetable. Now let's create the empty MIDI clip. I can describe this sound like a wobble bass. Yeah, I know it sounds like a sub, but we need to play with the frequency knob. I like the notes and now let's play with the frequency knob. I think we need to create an automation on this frequency knob. Our main goal with the sound is to finish the sound of the whole bass group with the cool wobble groove. With this automation we will try to create a dynamic um, between the each node. Yeah, now it sounds cool. And now let's listen to this sound in the whole mix. Perfect, and now we can extend this sound on the whole drop. I like the notes placement, I like the automation, and now this sound needs a definitely good audio processing. We will add some long reverb from the center turn channel and some delay also. Cool, and now we will try to add some volume uh, by adding the utility on the channel. Oh, it's still loud. Okay, let's leave the volume on the zero and let's move to the EQ. Here I think I will remove the low frequencies around the 700 Hz. Yeah, now it sounds exactly how I want it. But I also wanted to remove some harsh frequencies around the 900 Hz. Yeah, now it sounds good. Ok, and now let's play all elements together. Perfect, now it sounds good, and now we can slowly move to creating our drums group. And first of all, I will start from the pre-drop clap and signature animal style. Yes, this sample is sounds pretty good, and uh, we will place it right before the drop starts. Like you know, this signature anima clap hit before the drop. We'll create the empty MIDI channel for only one clap hit. I think we definitely need to reduce the volume of this clap. And I think it would be minus 10 dB. Now I will add the small verb here. Next I think we will distort this clap a little bit by adding the stock Ableton Overdrive. Yep, now it sounds definitely better.
Now we will add the EQ and I think we need to reduce the lower frequencies and also the higher frequencies. I will remove the lower frequencies around 225. And also the high frequencies around 5000. Because I don't want our ears bleeding right at the moment when the clap start hitting. Now let's listen all elements together. Ok, we've done with this pre-drop clap and now we will create the signature tight anima snare. It will consist of two layers of the snare and we will start from the first one. I'm already found the two really cool snares. This is the first one, the really short and punchy snare. Now we will create the empty midi clip and we will put our snares on the every second hit of the kick. Let's rename this channel on the short snare. And I think I will reduce the volume on the minus 4 dB. Ok, and I will create the group from our main snare for our future second layer of the snare. Ok, and now we need to protest the snare with the EQ and I will cut the low frequencies around 200. Now let's mix some short verb from the center turn channel on the whole group of the snares. Now we will loop this midi clip and extend for the whole drop. Ok, now we created the really cool main snare and now it's time to move to the second layer of our snare group. And as I said before, I prepared all the samples, included the two samples of the snares and the second one uh, would be the longer snare. Before we will edit, let's listen this one. Yep, cool, and now let's create the empty midi clip and place the second snare uh, the same way as the main snare. Oh, okay, we definitely need to reduce the volume of the second snare. Let's listen the snare in the whole mix. I think I will remove around the 14 dB. Yeah, perfect, and now this snare sounds really good, and now we need to apply some EQ. We will cut the low frequencies around 230. And we will remove a bit of the high frequencies around the 5000. Now we will loop this MIDI clip and we'll extend it on the whole drop. Now let's listen to the full snare group. Ok, and now we will add some percussion. We will create the empty MIDI clip. And in this MIDI clip I will try to play with velocity to add the groove to our percussion. Yeah, I think it needs to be the shorter notes. Yeah, this one is good. And now we will play with velocity. Now we can duplicate these four nodes, loop this MIDI clip and extend for the whole drop.
As you may see, at the beginning of our drop, I decided to leave our snares alone to uh, leave them space to uh, play without the rest of the drum group. Ok, and now we will create a new channel with the closed hi-hats. I will create an empty MIDI clip and I will use the same trick as on percussion. I will play with velocity to give these closed hi-hats a little bit of the groove. This is my favorite velocity pattern for the closed hi-hats and percussion. Now we can duplicate these notes in the MIDI clip, loop this MIDI clip and extend it for the whole drop. I will send this channel a little bit on the right side. Yeah, cool, and now let's listen all together. Cool, and now we will rename this channel to Closed Hi-Hats. Now we need to add an EQ to cut the frequencies around 3.75 Hz. Now we will create a new channel with the open hi-hats. Let's rename this channel. All open hi-hats we will place right between the kick and the snare. Now we can duplicate these notes. I think we need to reduce the volume around the 6 dB. Now we can extend this MIDI clip for the whole drop. And now we will add some stoke erosion to make this open hi-hat sound more interesting. And now let's listen all elements together. Ok, and the last part in the whole drum group is the top loop. I really like using the top loops because they are making your whole drum section sound more complicated. I like this top loop pretty much. Oh, but it definitely needs to be on the lower volume. I will reduce maybe the 17 dB. Ok guys, and now I will show you the trick with the warping drum loops. First of all, we need to choose the beats, then transients, then forward, and now we can play with the amount of the transients. And now we received only the needed transients from this drum loop. Now let's listen all together. Let's rename this channel on the top loop. Let's mix this short verb from the center turn channel. And the last step, I will add an EQ and cut the low frequencies uh, all around the 600 Hz. Ok, and now we can loop this drum loop and extend it for the whole drop. And now we can play the whole drum section together. Ok, 
Ok guys, the time has come and now we will build our scene section. And of course we will start from the signature animal lead. I have prepared the channel with the serum preset. And I will remind you that you can download this preset and this template on my Patreon page. For this lead we will choose the really low octaves for the notes. And here is the small secret behind the animal lead. This is not the sound design, this is the placement of the notes. We must place our notes like we're shooting from the minigun. We will add a few more notes. Perfect, and now let's listen to the lead with the all other elements. Let's reduce the volume on minus 10 dB. And now the main trick, we will link our lead to the elements that we created in the bass section. Many big producers are using this technique and it calls request response. With our animal lead we are making the request with these notes. And with elements that we created in the bass section we are making the response. Now let's listen all the elements and you will understand what I'm talking about. You can clearly hear that when the lead's playing, it creates the request and other elements in the bass sections are giving the response to the lead. Perfect, and now we're linked all the elements in the track and now we will extend the lead for the whole drop. Ok, cool, and now I will mix the long verb to this channel through the send return. And let's add some delay. And the last step is adding the EQ. Uh, we will cut the really low sub frequencies from the lead. I think around 45 Hz. Ok, cool, we created an amazing signature animal lead. And now let's add the new elements. Uh, this is the ARP to our scene section. I have already prepared the channel with the wavetable and now I will create the empty MIDI clip. Now let's dive into this clip and play with the notes. Yeah, this one sounds good. Now we can duplicate these notes. Ok, now we will extend this clip for the whole drop. I think I will reduce the volume on minus 16. Ok, now it needs some audio processing and I will start from my favorite erosion. I just wanted to make this ARP sound more interesting. Ok, and now let's add some delay straight to the channel. And now let's use the EQ. We will cut the low frequencies around the 445 Hz.
Now I wanted to boost the mid frequencies a bit to give uh, this herb a bit of the body. And we will boost the high frequencies a bit. Now let's listen the full synth section. I will mix the long reverb through the send return channel. And here is the main trick that I will use on this ARP. I really wanted to give the huge amount of the space for our lead and I will use the sidechain on the ARP and I will use the lead like a sidechain trigger. And every time when our lead will play, our ARP will play much much quieter. Now let's play with the threshold knob. And now just listen the final result. And that's amazing how much space we gave to our main lead. Ok guys, and now we're slowly moving to our vocal group. I found really cool samples with the robot voice. What we think, we become. This one is definitely in the anima style. What we think. And first of all we will warp the sample. What we. And we will choose the complex mode. What we think, we become. I will reduce the volume on minus what 30. What we think, we become. And I think we will use this vocal right before the drop. What we think, we become. Here's the second cool sample with the robot voice. Spiritual. Experience. And now let's play with the sample and place it inside the drop. Spiritual. Experience. Hmm, this is the really cool sample, but I think I like the second phrase more. Experience. Yeah, and let's try to put this phrase like a transition between the sections. Experience. Now let's trim this sample. And let's play it in the drop. Experience. Yeah, this is exactly what we're looking for. And now we can duplicate this phrase for the whole drop. Experience. Experience. Now let's use the EQ on this channel with the robot voice. We will try to remove all the harsh frequencies and we will start from the low frequencies and we will try to remove everything uh, about 300 Hz. What do you think? What we think. What we think. Sounds good. What we think. What we think. What we think. What we think. Now let's reduce what the frequency think. around 560. What we, think. what we 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 think. And around what 1000. What we think. What we think. Let's play with the Q knob. What we think, we become. And now let's listen this vocal with the drop. What we think, we become. Yeah, sounds good. And now I will mix the short Exper verb through the send return. Experience. And also I will add a bit of the delay also through the send return. Experience. Ok 
Okay, now we will create the second layer of the vocals with the really long and beautiful vocal. I found a really cool sample with the heaven vocal, it's definitely in style of anima. And now let's play with the sample. Okay, and now we need to warp the sample. We will choose the original BPM and we'll choose the complex warping mode. I really like this part of the sample. Now we will trim this part. And I will reduce the volume on minus 16. And now it's time for audio processing. We will start from stock Ableton OTT and we will boost the high frequencies. And we will remove the low frequencies a bit. Ok, now we will add some delay straight on the channel. And of course we need some EQ here. We will remove the low frequencies around 300 Hz. Also, we will remove these dirty frequencies around 500 Hz. And now my favorite part, we will create an amazing gated FX trick. We will use the plugin called ShaperBox. We need to choose the filter, then 116. Now we need to choose the form of the filter. And we will play with the dry wet knob. And the last step we will play with the envelopes. Sounds really cool, and now let's listen all the elements together. Cool, and now we need to duplicate this vocal for the whole drop. Experience. Ok guys, and the final element in our drop is the noise group. We'll start from the simple sweep down FX. Let's drag and drop this sample. Oh, it definitely needs to be a lot quieter. I will try to reduce the volume on minus 23. Yeah, it's definitely better now and we need to warp this sample and I will choose the complex warping mode. And I will create the fade on this sample. And now let's add some reverb directly on the channel. Ok, and now we can duplicate this FX for the whole drop.
The next simple noise is the sweep up. I will create the empty MIDI clip because I prepared the operator for this sound. And now we will automate the frequency knob. I decided to create the sweep up noise in the operator because when you are automating the frequency knob, you have the better control on the FX. Yeah, cool, and now we can just duplicate this noise for the whole drop. And now let's add some EQ and cut the low frequencies around 3.2 Hz. Yeah, cool, we created some simple noises for a better transition between one section to another. Okay, and now let's create the FX pad. This is the dark crease pad and I am creating the empty MIDI clip because I have prepared uh, the channel with the serum preset. Yeah, cool, but it definitely needs to be quieter. But first of all, let's add an EQ. And we will cut the low frequencies around 350. Now let's add some small verb through the sender turn channel. Okay, and now let's listen the full noise group. Okay, now let's add the new layer with the dark texture. Let's drag and drop the sample. We need to warp it with the complex warping mode. Okay, now let's duplicate this sample for our whole drop. I will make it quieter for 20 dB. Now I will mix some long verb and some delay for the send return channels. Now let's listen the full group again. Ok, now let's create a new layer with the sidechain white noise. This is the cool sample for our whole noise group. Let's make it a bit quieter inside the sample. And now let's extend the sample for our whole drop. And don't forget to use the complex warping mode. Let's check the full noise group again. And let's rename this channel for background white noise. And now let's create the last layer in our noise group. That will be the noise of the vinyl and we will use that for the whole drop. Let's drag and drop this sample. Now let's warp it. Now we need to consolidate this sample. Now we can set the sample for the loop and extend for the whole drop. Yep, 
Yep, and finally we made the full noise group and let's listen all the elements together. And now guys, it's time to move to the arrangement and we will start from the intro. As you may see at the beginning of the track, I used the EQ automation on the kick. And from the bass group I used only top bass. Our main goal in the intro to slowly introduce all the elements from the track. Experience. Now at the moment when the automation from the kick is gone, I added the lower bass. As you may see, I didn't open the whole drums group, and here I used only closed heads and percussion. From the scene group, we are using only the pad that I added right now. Here's the end of the intro and we are coming to the first build-up. On the lower bass I use the EQ automation to remove the lower frequencies in the build-up. And in the drum section I use the snares to make the smooth transition to the drop. Experience. And here's the end of the first build-up and we are slowly coming to the first drop. As you may see, I didn't use the second part of the lead, I decided to leave it on the second drop. In the first drop, we are slowly introducing our drums, starting from the snares. Then we are adding the percussion and the closed hi-hats. Also, the vocal starts coming up. Here we're opening the open hi-hats and the top loop. And now we're slowly opening the arm. In the end of the first drop you can see the automation on the kick again, we're removing snares, we're leaving only the arp without the lead, we're preparing for the smoother transition to the breakdown. Here's the end of the first drop and we're coming to the breakdown. In the breakdown you can hear the elements that we're using only here, like a wrist bass and a few pads. On one of the pads you can clearly hear the same effect that we are using on the vocal with the shaper box. In the second part of the breakdown we are adding the closed hi-hats and percussion. Here is the end of the breakdown and we are coming to the second build-up. In the second breakdown you can hear the Reese bass, pads and the snare roll. And I decided not to add the fourth note to the pads and to the Reese bass for a more interesting transition. What we think, we become. Here's the end of the second build up and we're coming to the second drop. Now you can hear the full lead with the all notes. And as you may see, the vocal starts playing right in the beginning of the second drop. All drums parts are opening the same like in the first drop.
And here is the end of our second drop and we're slowly coming to the outro of our track. In most cases the outro of the track is the reversed intro. And as you may see in the first part of the outro we decided to leave the bass, kick and other stuff but in the second part we're removing the bass and using the same EQ on the kick that you can notice in the intro of our track. And now our track is slowly coming to the end. And that's how we produce the track in signature Anima Melodic Techno style. Yep, that's it guys, thank you so much for watching this tutorial, I hope you liked it. And just a quick reminder, you can download the template that I've created in this tutorial on my Patreon page. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. See you in the next videos.